Hola amigos, today I'm uh, walking in the park in a vlog format. I'm going to show you the like a 10 to 25 millimeter f1.7. How does it look in vlogging? I'm sure you have seen it in other videos, other samples, other vlogs. But I just wanted to make my own. There's my bike in the back. I don't know if you can see it. Anyways, I also wanted to talk about the Peak Design Capture. This thing allows me to mount my camera on my shoulder, kind of on my chest. Peak Design Capture version 3, I think. Just bought it for 69 euro. A great price. Uh, yeah, it's very convenient. It just fix on your chest. It doesn't move around when you are walking or biking. It's fixed. It, it's not like it doesn't have its problem. It has, when I want to take the bag off, it's a little bit uh, awkward. But otherwise, it's a pretty convenient. Okay, the GX85 doesn't have a flip screen, so I can only hope that I'm in focus. Show you a quick release like this. Very, very easy and convenient. And just put it back on like that and take it off. I've seen demonstrations online, they can take it off with one hand. I don't know how. I cannot. Because maybe because the camera is too big and my hands too small, I just can't reach it. Can't reach the release. It's too, too far, too big. And let me show you what a lens strap does. It does this. <coughs> it just constantly has the, the risk of bumping into something. Like when you are leaning over, the, it's dangling. It's in the air. It's not secure. So, yeah, camera strap. I mean, it can be very convenient. But oh, I just killed a bug on my arm. Huh. But uh, I think the capture thing on the strap of a backpack is pretty pretty neat it's better I think and the GX 85 so autofocus doesn't seem to work on its own ever it's so frustrating when you point the camera towards yourself if you don't use a mirror to look at yourself you just don't know if it's in focus very likely you even if you point the camera directly to your face it won't focus the GX 85 is just bad, so bad GH5, GH5 is much better I think uh, it's locking onto my face. The face detection actually does detecting uh, pretty well. And uh, yeah, the Leica how to focus is pretty good. I don't know. I saw Gerald and Undone's review of this lens comparing this to Sigma 1835. He says that this lens is very bad in video autofocus, but I don't agree. <laughs> I think it's uh, just like any other Lumix lens. It's not fast, it's not slow in video. It's just a you know standard micro four third system. I don't, I don't know. I, I I think it's very reliable in video. More vlogging. This place looks pretty nice. Clearly, I have run out of things to say to the camera, so... Usually when I do this kind of vlog shot, I just... look into the camera and say nothing. It's awkward. It's so awkward. Last time I tested the Sigma 10 to 20 mm lens here in, in this park. That was fun. I did some running, uh, like camera conspiracy style, slow motion running scene. That was fun. Well, there's no uh, lens stabilization in either of these lenses. Not in this Leica, not in the Sigma. Mm, but the result is pretty nice. I mean, there is some shaky jello effect in the background when you're shooting with Sigma 10 to 20 because it's so wide, it's much wider than this even. Uh, but if you don't, look at the background it's totally fine and people don't really look at the background that closely i mean it's a it's the background for a reason because you're looking at a person in front in, in focus or the subject in focus so yeah it's not a big issue if you're just vlogging but if you're shooting landscape a video it can be uh can be problematic so far i haven't i haven't, I haven't really noticed the problem of you know shaky jittering and uh, jello effect on with the Leica lens. P 
probably because it's not that wide it's 10 millimeters like 20 millimeter full frame equivalent it's not that crazy wide yet it's not like 16 millimeter or 14 millimeter uh, so yeah uh, the in body stabilization is doing a great job I think the Sun is directly behind me kind of yeah, I can't really see it. it's so bright outside um, and people complain about Sony monitor for being you know, too dim I think Panasonic is not much better I can't really see the detail on the uh, from the monitor yeah, I can see you know silhouette shapes but everything is dark maybe it's because of the direction I'm uh, shooting into the sunlight uh, anyway I just thought maybe since we're already here let's talk about the lens itself this, this 10 to 25 millimeter lens uh, I've tested the sharpness I've seen a lot of testing online already testing against the, for example the Leica 12 millimeter f1.4 and this lens is sharper than that and also it's sharper than 25 millimeter f1.4 yeah, so it's basically sharper than all the prime lenses and yeah it's basically you can replace all the prime lenses if a zoom is sharper than prime then yeah you, you can just replace those those prime lenses uh, the only thing is that uh, maybe you are uh, used to shooting with a small lightweight lens then you probably won't like this big chunky zoom lens this is really exceptionally big for micro four third and uh, I did my test against the, like a 12 to 60 millimeter. So in my review of the 12 to 60 millimeter lens, I said that that lens is the sharpest lens I've ever seen, ever tested. And now this is sharper than that lens. Okay, right now I'm putting the lens at 12 millimeter, so you can see how it looks. I think 12 millimeter is pretty nice focal length for vlogging. Uh, yeah, I wanted to see the bokeh as well. How does it look? And uh, yeah, it's a chunky big lens. You know, I, I get tired after a while. Um, my arm gets a little bit sore. That's very natural because, you know, big lens. So 12 to 60 millimeter may just be a better option for vlogging. Not only because of the reach of a 60 millimeter on the telephoto end but also because of its small size it's half the size half the weight uh, and also you can just uh, put it in a bag very conveniently it doesn't take up much space so yeah it, it has a lot of uh, advantages actually actually you know what since I brought both lenses I'm gonna do a sharpness test a very basic test I'm gonna test the 12 millimeter and 25 millimeter and that's it. I need to find a nice place to, you know, uh, uh, maybe a wall where I can test the, uh, um, test the sharpness. I want to shoot against the trees because it's a little bit uh, random. Like a 10 to 25 looks a bit sharper at 12 millimeter than the like a 12 to 60 and uh, even at f1.7 it is sharper so that's pretty crazy and then at a 25 millimeter I think they are very very close and uh, even at f1.7 this lens is very sharp 
have obviously is going to be less contrasty but uh, when I stop it down to f4 it's really close I can't really tell which one's sharper right now I have uh, the other camera on the strap here and then I have the capture here so you can carry two cameras um, this way and uh, they don't really interference with each other because if you have two cameras on straps they overlay each other it's really confusing but this way it's very clear when you need double camera setup it's very convenient to have one on the capture one on straps all right i think uh, that's it for me today for this vlog and uh, the last clip a little bit risky i'm gonna i'm gonna hold the camera while riding the bike so this is the last clip enjoy and see you next one. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe.